In this video, I will use the power rule to find the derivative of the following functions. First of all, let's talk about the power rule. If I have f of x equals a times x to the n power, where a is some constant and n is the exponent on x, then the derivative f prime of x equals that constant times n times x to the n minus 1. So what you're doing is you're taking that exponent, bringing it to the front, or multiplying it by x, and then reducing the exponent by 1. So let's put that into action here. In the first one, f prime of x then equals 6 times 3, because we have an exponent of 3, times x to the, we're going to reduce the exponent by 1. So x to the second power. Minus, or I'm going to say minus 1, just to, to keep that clear, because uh, minus is like saying minus 1 times. So minus 1 times 2 times x to the first. Now we're going to, when we re when we rewrite that, we are not going to write the exponent of 1, but I just wanted to show uh, what is happening here. Plus 4 times here, just like I said in the last ex uh, term, if the exponent is 1, we usually don't write it. So if we don't see an exponent, it is assumed that this exponent is 1. So 4 times, then 4 times 1 times x to the 0 is what we'll see in that term. And, and yes, x to the 0 is equal to 1, so we'll deal with that in just a second. Ah, this last term, 13. So plus, I'm just going to follow this rule directly, plus 13 times, well, this is like saying 13 times x to the 0, because any number to the 0 power equals 1. So we can just say it's like saying it's times x to the 0, or 13 times 1. So I'm going to say, then using this rule, I'm going to say uh, 13 times 0. That is the coefficient, or that is the, um, the exponent of x. So I'll, I will make it the coefficient. 13 times 0 times, now it doesn't matter because we've got something times 0, but it would be times x to the negative 1. Take 1 off of the 0. Well, let's look at what happens here. We know that this whole thing goes to 0. And another way to look at that is, remember that the derivative means the slope, the instantaneous slope of a function. So if we're talking about just this term, just 13, that is this line, y equals 13. Well, all along this line, the slope is 0, 0 rise over a bunch of run. So that's another reason that the derivative of a constant is just 0. So we'll, we'll write that as a 0. OK, what happens with the rest of this? 6 times 3 is 18. So 18 times x to the second power minus 2 times x plus x to the 0 power is just 1. So this is just plus 4. And that is it. That is the first derivative of this function, as opposed to the second or third or fourth derivatives. The second derivative would just be taking the derivative of what we have here, of the first derivative. But we're just taking the first derivative for now. Now, on to h of x. I'm going to first rewrite h of x in terms of negative exponents, because that'll help us to see what's happening. So h of x equals, I'm not doing the derivative yet, I'm just doing equals 3 times x to the negative 2. That's the properties of exponents. If you have a, a negative exponent, then you would put it in the denominator with a positive exponent. Or if it's already in the denominator with a positive exponent, move it up to the numerator with a negative exponent. Um, so so that's that's what x squared in the denominator can become is really x to the negative 2 up in the numerator minus 1 times x to the negative 1 because remember we don't see an exponent here so it's like x to the 
to the positive 1 in the denominator, which is the same as x to the negative 1 up in the numerator. Now we can apply our rules. So derivative now, the first derivative of h is 3 times 2, hey, that's times negative 2, because the exponent is negative 2. So 3 times negative 2 times x to the negative 3. We've just uh, taken 1 off of the exponent here. Minus 1 times negative 1. I've taken this exponent of negative 1 and moved it over as a coefficient. So times x to the negative 2, taking 1 off of the exponent. Now let's rewrite this in a nice fashion. So the first derivative of h equals, I'll put 3 times negative 2 up in the numerator again. So negative 6 over, and I'm going to move this x to the negative 3 down to the denominator. So that is x to the positive 3, right? x to the negative 3 equals 1 over x to the positive 3. Now we have uh, minus times a uh, negative times a negative equals a positive. So positive 1 over x squared. So we've taken the derivative now of the h function. On to the last example. g of x. Let's rewrite this one. I'm not taking the derivative yet. I'm just rewriting this. This is 10 times x to the 1 half because a, a um, radical, just a square root, is the same as saying a 1 half power. So 10 times x to the 1 half plus 7 times x to the 2 thirds. That's already done for us. Now g prime then, the first derivative, is going to be 10 times 1 half times x to the, well, 1 half minus 1. We follow the rule exactly. So that's 1, ha one half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Plus 7 times 2 thirds times x to the negative 1 third, right? 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. So now we can rewrite this. The first derivative of the function equals 5, that's 10 times 1 half, over the square root. Because x to the negative 1 half is like saying x to the positive 1 half in the denominator. And x to the 1 half is the square root of x. So I've, I've taken that x to the negative 1 half and put it down in the denominator as x to the positive 1 half, which is the square root of. Plus... Let's see, 7 times 2 thirds, that is 14 thirds, and x to the negative 1 third, that's going to go in the denominator, x as x to the positive 1 third, so that is the cube root of x. And alternately, you could, of course, just write that as x to the 1 third in the, in the denominator. But I'm just showing uh, how these exponents work with the radicals. And you'll see that when sometimes when you are taking derivatives.